In this video, we'll explore things even further as we move to an activity. One of the ways to define endpoints with a RESTful API is by importing external service files, which will generate endpoints with corresponding linked processes as proxies for external web service requests from a local file. In this activity, we'll create a REST API using an external service file a Swagger specification file in YAML. I'll start by creating a new folder for this section. This is section four, import file. Now within this folder, I'm gonna create a new folder called implementation processes. The API in this activity accommodates multiple methods and endpoints. We're gonna import two implementation processes from process library to use as part of our listener processes with the API. So I'll browse the process library, and then I'm gonna enter the beginning of the process name, getAccount. I need to install both getAccounts database and getAccount by account ID. So I'll install the first, sending it to that section four folder. Then I can go back to library and install the other. All right, I'll close. Now the data used in this activity is stored in our training MySQL database. Both of these implementation processes use the same database connector, but the process library doesn't include it. So we're gonna use the database connection from our section two folder. That will help to reduce the use of duplicate connections in this account. I'm gonna open the first implementation process, get account by account ID. And then here in the start shape, I'll choose the connection again from the section two folder, Boomi Training MySQL. While this is open, we can look at the process. You'll notice that there is a parameter here of param underscore account ID. This is set as a dynamic process property, and this is a URI parameter. So entering an account ID as part of the URL path will retrieve information about that account. The information will be mapped from database to JSON for being sent back to the client with the return document shape. I'll open the other process, get accounts. First, I'll load the database connection from API section two into both of the database connectors. And now we can look at this process. So here, the request will come in. We have a decision shape, which is going to look at a dynamic process property name, a query parameter of account type. Now, if that account type is set to all, then the document will come up here and we'll retrieve information about all of the bank accounts within the database. They'll be converted to JSON before assembling the response and sending it here through the return document shape. But if the query underscore account type is not set to all, if it's checking, savings, or loan, then the data will come down here looking at the query underscore account type, and we'll map the appropriate data before returning that response. So those are our implementation processes. Now I'm going to create a new component here in section four of an API service. And I'll call this bank accounts.
I'll add some metadata here in the General tab, Bank Account, 1.0, Retrieve Bank Account Information. And importantly, I will specify the base API path. Call this Bank Version 1. Now I'm going to import the Swagger specification file by clicking Import an Endpoint and selecting Import from an External Service file. I'll click Next, and then I can choose the file from my laptop. Bank API YAML, and I'll choose the location for the process. Now I don't want it to go to the Implementation Processes folder, I'm going to send it to the Section 4 Import File folder. Now here in the Connection Component Chooser, I need to select the API's HTTP Client Connection. Now our integration scenario does not require the use of the HTTP Client Connection, but the API component does need to have that as part of this process. So I'm going to choose from the API Section 2 folder that HTTP client Atom Cloud that we created in a previous section of this class. I'll click Next, and I'm going to select Get Accounts and Get Accounts using the Account ID. Click Next, Next again, and the endpoints have been created. You can see the processes here in the Component Explorer and they've been added into the component. Now, if I move here to the REST tab, the processes were imported, but we're going to modify them a little bit. So I'll open this process, Get Account, and instead of using this HTTP client connector, all of the implementation can be done using a process call to call that implementation process. First, though, I'm going to come into the operation and change the method or the operation type uh, to get. Then I can remove this connector and in place of that, put a process call And from the API Section 4 Implementation Processes folder, I'll select Get Accounts Database. So now when the request comes in, it will be received here by the Web Services Server Connector, then sent to that implementation process. And finally, the results will be returned to the client. So I'll save and close that. And then I'm going to open the other process and make a similar change. First, in the operation, I'll change the operation type to get. Remove this HTTP client connector. Add a process call. And then from API Section 4 Implementation Processes, I'll choose Get Account using the account ID. All right, the processes are configured, the API component is configured appropriately. Now I can save and close. And it's time to deploy. So I deployed the two listener processes as well as the API. And now I'm just going to confirm the shared web server settings are configured correctly, and they are the API type advanced, which is what we need. Now it's time to call the API. Once again, we're going to demonstrate this using Postman 
but you could use Advanced REST Client, SOAP UI, or any other application for testing REST APIs. So I'll copy the base URL. The remainder of the URL path can be found here in the API component. Under the REST tab, I'll start with the get accounts using the account ID. That's a URI parameter. So in place of this, I can add an actual account ID, change the authorization type to basic, my credentials are already entered, and so I can hit send. So here my account ID type and balance are returned. Now if I want to use the other approach for the other process, I can change this to the query parameter of account type equals checking. And now I've received in my response the different checking accounts within that database. This video concludes now, but you can follow the steps in the activity guide to complete all of these steps on your own. A Swagger specification file, bankapi.yaml, can be downloaded from Boomi's LMS.